Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about why do demonstrations, okay? And what makes a good demonstration? Well, let me read to you first, why do some demonstrations? I've, I've thought of seven things about why you should do demonstrations. They display chemical phenomena. That's pretty obvious. You're teaching chemistry. They develop observational skills. One of the things we want our students to do. Stimulate the thought process. They sure do that. They arouse curiosity. They visualize abstractions. And this is the one that we're going to focus on today because they're fun for both you and the students and they act as a catalyst for learning. This gentleman whose quote I have right over here, surprise, humor, and truth are the servants of a good lecturer. That is very true. Hubert Elliot, a famous uh, freshman science professor that taught at Princeton, taught chemistry for 30 years there. The movie The Nutty Professor was based partly on his teaching style. He used a lot of demonstrations and jokes to try to help get this subject that we call chemistry across to people, to make it palatable to them. And I have some educational documentation right here from that well-known journal called The Onion. Uh, educational journal. And here, this is an article. It says, the high school teacher takes fun and excitement out of science. And it has a picture of the high school chemistry teacher's name is Randall. And I got to read this to you. I gotta take my glasses off. Randall awaits the beginning of fourth period during the, which the students will read silently at their desk. There is nothing more exciting than that. <laughs> so I claim that doing demonstrations can add some excitement to your class and actually act as a catalyst for learning. And so the demonstration I've chosen to do is called the genie in the bottle. Now there's a catchy name for that. And I'm not gonna do it as I, uh, directly as I would do in my class. I wouldn't give it away just like I've done to you with a name like that, because that may mean something to you. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the purpose of this demonstration. You can do this particular demonstration uh, when you're talking about catalysts, obviously from the line I just gave you, activation energy, reaction mechanisms, even temperature and rates and concentrations. There's a whole uh, list of things you can use this demonstration to do when you're talking about kinetics. And you can also use it to show balancing equations, a decomposition reaction. Um, I tend to do this in a pop bottle. What I've got in this pop bottle, if you're from this area, uh, Illinois, if you're from New York, I believe it's a soda bottle. And if you're from Atlanta, of course, then it's going to be a Pepsi or a Coke bottle. Sorry, if you're from Atlanta. Some people do it in a um, vase and they make it look like a genie vase. And that's good if it's Pyrex. Just be sure you try that ahead of time uh, so the vase doesn't break. And what I've put in there is some 30% peroxide. That's what I have right here. 30% peroxide in this nice accordion bottle, which I'll talk about briefly in a little while. So I've put in about 80 milliliters of 30% uh, peroxide. And you'd wanna have your student stand at least 15 feet back. And you might even use a safety shield. I didn't put one here so we can get the nice visual effect with the camera. Um, and I do have it clamped down because that is important. The catalyst I'm going to put in is manganese dioxide. And uh, it happens to be in a tea bag. So I would set this up in the following way. Um, I would be talking about peroxide. And I would tell the students, you've probably worked with peroxide before. You've probably had peroxide. When you were a kid, you cut yourself, and your mother would put some peroxide on there. And you'd see a little bubbling when it hit the blood, because there's a catalyst in your blood called catalase. And that causes the hydrogen peroxide to decompose. What happens very simply is the hydrogen peroxide gives off oxygen and forms some water. Some of you are saying, well, it's not balanced. Now, the students may not notice, but some of you do. We're going to come back to that. We're going to balance it in a little while. But that's 3% hydrogen peroxide, I tell the students. This is 30%. This is 10 times more concentrated. If you poured this on there, the reaction would be much faster, and you'd notice a secondary effect. Your flesh would bubble off. That's not a good thing, necessarily. So this can be potentially dangerous. The catalyst I'm not going to use is blood. I thought about using some blood. I went to the blood bank and tried to make a withdrawal, but then I decided maybe that's not a good idea here. Now, it's in there. 
and I'm going to add the catalyst, the manganese dioxide is in this tea bag, and you could set it up with whatever scenario you want when you do it. I like to play the song from the television show, I Dream of Genie. You may have heard that show. I guarantee your students do. They remember that song. The sad thing is they don't remember the uh, symbol for sodium, but they'll remember the I Dream of Genie theme song. So uh, the other thing to do is make sure it's not directly underneath a light that could have problems or something else. So I'm going to put this in there. We're going to take a look at the reaction and we're going to see what happens. So here we go. I'm going to step back. That was fairly spectacular, wasn't it? What happened is, as the reaction took place with the catalyst, the hydrogen peroxide broke down. There was a lot of energy given off. It's an exothermic reaction. It caused the water to boil, which you saw, not with steam, because steam you can't see. That was a colloidal dispersion of water droplets that you, got, you saw shooting up along with the oxygen gas. You'll notice something else, that this pop bottle shrunk. It got so hot that it actually shrunk back. And some of you will also notice that uh, this is a really old pop bottle. The ones nowadays will not shrink as much because they changed the melt point on that, on the newer pop bottle. What happened is this pop bottle shrank back, and when it shrank back, the molecules in here went under some kind of a deformation. What happens is when they take pop bottles, they start out like this. This is a baby pop bottle, sometimes called a preform, and they put these into a dye, and when they put these into a dye, they blow hot air in and they blow them up to this size. Because when they ship them to the bottling factory, if you think about it, if they had to ship them like this to the bottling factory, what would happen is you'd have a lot of, ex you'd have a lot of wasted space in all those trucks, so they ship them like this. They drop them in a dye, blow them up, and they end up this size. What happens is the molecules are all kind of tangled up in this state, and when they blow them up, they get stretched out into long chains like this, the polymers, and when you heat them back up, like I did in this reaction here, they start to curl back up or shrink back down. Here is a preform for a five gallon water bottle. Many of your plastic bottles come in these preform sizes, all kinds like this. And there's a lot of interesting chemistry going on in here. And there's a handout that comes with this that goes into great detail on what's going on with this. Now, a nice thing about this thing, pop bottle, uh, this, peroxide bottle that we talked about before, the 30% bottle is. If you're going to use this, make sure you cap it and move it away when you're doing the reaction. It's okay like this, but if you left it like this, which I did on purpose here so you could see what could happen, this could spew up and what happens? The catalyst, some of that will be carried up in the air and end up back in the bottle. And that's not a good thing. That's a bad thing. One of the teachers that I was working with did that. And just a small amount goes in there. And it was the last period of the day. So he capped that bottle up and went home. And an interesting thing happened. By the time he got back the next day, the bottle was this big. He freaked. He, look at this. Look at this. I said, did you do the genie in the bottle yesterday? Yes. Did you leave the bottle maybe uncapped by the reaction? He said, I may have. I said, that's good. Let's open it really carefully in the hood. Without a bottle like this, if you open that up, it would be under a great deal of pressure. So this is a very interesting safety thing. Now, the other thing you can do with this is, now that it's cooled down enough for me to handle it better, is the magnesium, manganese dioxide is still in here. And you can actually take that out, let it dry, filter it, and you can use it again. That's the sign of a catalyst. You could use it again. In fact, you could probably use this again right now with some more peroxide. There's a couple more things you can do with it. This was room temperature peroxide. You don't want to heat the 30% up, I'll tell you that. But you can take some cold peroxide and the reaction will be a little slower. You could take some dilute. You can take a 3% and show them that the reaction rate would be slower. There's another re, uh, use for this, and that is you do the demonstration and then you can show them how to balance equations. So let me move this out of the way and hold this up. So here, we've just had a decomposition reaction. Hydrogen peroxide breaking down to oxygen 
and water. That's not balanced. And you can see it's not balanced, right? All right. Now we're going to start, take a look at it, and we're going to see that we got two hydrogens here, we got two there. That's good. But the oxygens are bad. We've got three here and two here. Some people like to use what's called an odd even rule. They like to make this even. That helps. I'm going to put a two there. Now that's four. So I'm going to need to put a two over here, it looks like, because it's still not balanced. So if I put a two right here, then our equation is balanced. Okay? We have the same number of atoms on both sides of the equation. And this is a very high-tech device that you can make to show that. Unbalanced, balanced. Okay? Thank you.